And we're back with a quick RimWorld tutorial. And today we're going to be covering meat beacons. As in beacons that send out a nice big mood boost to people inside their range. These are very similar to the Psychic Emanator. Psychic Emanator gives a mood boost of plus 5 to any pawns within range. That's That pawn there, Dr. Hannibal, is getting a, a 5 Psychic Soothe from this little electronic emanator over here that you get from quests. You can't build these or buy them. However, you can get the same thing, but with people. So Dr. Hannibal here is also getting a plus 16 from Yunners here. Now, before we go any further, if uh, some of the milder war crimes in RimWorld, like, say, cannibalism or organ harvesting, make you a little bit uncomfortable, then you might want to skip this video by, because it does get very... Let's just say it gets very RimWorld. It gets very, very, very RimWorld. First up, we'll cover exactly what uh, um, these meat beacons are and how, what you actually try to aim for. But if you're looking to, if you already know what they are and you just want to build them, there's some timestamps below. Just you can skip around to wherever you want. Now, first up, this here is a psychic harmonizer. Psychic harmonizers allow you to broadcast the sensitivity of the, or the, the happiness mood of the pawn in a surrounding radius. This big, 30 tiles in a radius. You can see this here. So everyone in this area will get a nice big mood boost, assuming they don't have a Psychic Harmonizer themselves. People with Psychic Harmonizers can't affect each other, so you can't sort of daisy chain them together, unfortunately. However, it's not just that they give a, a Psychic Mood Boost, it can actually vary by quite substantially. For example, Yunner's Yuri is giving plus 16, but we've also got, say, another Barret over here. One of these Barrets is giving a plus 8, then we've got another Barret that's giving minus 1, another Barret that's giving a minus 2, another Barret that's giving a minus 8. How does this work? Well, it's all to do with the mood of the pawn that has the implant. So, for example, this pawn here is all the way maxed out at full mood. So they'll be giving a plus eight. Now, you can modify this by giving them psychic sensitivity boosts. So if they were psychic hypersensitive and stuff like that, this would increase the mood boost. We'll go more into that later. But the default is eight. So for that's for a max happiness pawn. Now, if you look at this one over here, this one has zero mood. So they're actually giving out a minus eight. And these ones in the middle are giving about you know, one minus one. It depends what where exactly their uh, their mood bar is. Once it hits this point here, that's zero. That's their zero point. The point where they start to get into mental break territory is when they start going into the minus numbers. Anything above mental break territory is when they start going into the plus numbers. And somewhere around the center there is where it's a zero. However, you can amplify this by giving them a few other implants. Like if you give them a psychic uh, psychic sensitizer, this improves their psychic sensitivity. If you were to also add on a bunch more things, if the target pawn has psychic hypersensitivity, that actually cranks up how much of a mood boost it gives. That's an extra six points. So you can take that eight, and if the pawn is hi psychically hypersensitive, that immediately goes up to 14. Uh, this pawn is also wearing some gear. They've got themselves on a LTEC staff, which gives them a nice big bonus. And they've got an LTEC helmet, which is masterwork. This is this is allowing them to, yes, definitely crank up the mood boost to 23. Any pawns inside this radius here, like see this radius here, all the way around, 23. They're getting a plus 23 mood boost. That is hugely powerful. However, there is, of course, dangers to this. What happens if your pawn gets sick? What happens if their parents die? What happens if they get mechanites or there's a high psychic drone? This can all result in their mood being jammed down and that person who was a mood boost and a net positive to your colony can suddenly end up being a massive negative, which could be really, really bad. So what accidentally happened when I was attempting to put in the psychic harmonizer on this pawn, the operation was botched. This botched operation resulted in brain damage to the pawn. Uh, they they got they lost five hit points off their brain, or fifty percent of their consciousness was basically eradicated, reducing their consciousness substantially. As well as that, I put in a joy wire in the pawn afterwards to actually crank up their mood. We wanted to have their mood nice and high, so a joy wire in one of these people seemed like a smart idea. As well as that, they were also a, a nudist, so and a pyromaniac. So I figured give them a, a flame based weapon and give them the strip off their clothes, and they'd be very happy and very hard to break. However, the joy wire decreased their consciousness below the threshold for actual consciousness. So once they went below 30% consciousness, they literally just passed out. At this point, their mood locks. Once a pawn is unconscious, their mood actually locks at that position. Their recreation locks and their mood, as far as I can tell. So they can't have any mood changes at all while they remain unconscious. This meant you now have a meat-based a meat beacon that cannot be affected by any negatives. It just lies there. It's true, you have to feed it, but you know you have to feed electricity to this. This just means you feed it meals. As long as we feed Yunner's meals, they will keep bringing out this perfect mood boost to everyone in range, and they can never be damaged by any negative effects. I mean, someone could beat them up, and they'd still be perfectly happy. They're um, was it someone said? Dupont's dream of Eltec sheep. Yes, they're just locked in a happy dream for all eternity. But 
now comes the tricky part. How do we replicate the brain damage? It used to be you could get them hooked on Gojuice, and Gojuice had a tolerance level, and once you got above a certain amount, they'd... Uh, it had a mean chance to develop 50% brain damage. However, they seem to have removed tolerance from Gojuice, about 1.2, patch 1.2. I, I, I don't know why, so you just can't seem to do it that way anymore. However, there are other options for brain damaging your pollen. The first and simplest way is, well, botched operations. And it turns out you can botch operations pretty reliably, assuming you make the conditions just horrific enough. The first thing you're going to want to use for operations is a sleeping spot. This has the worst chances. It's you, They still have to lie on something, remember? Then once you've got a sleeping spot, you can check out here what its uh, surgery success chance is, which is 27%. Uh, that's because it's outdoor, room cleanliness is zero, uh, and also there's no light. Now, if you're doing this outdoors, what you're going to want to do is, just in case the sun comes up at any particular point, is build a roof, say like this, and then boom. They can now perform the operation in the dark, even if it's in full daylight. At the same point, use a herbal medicine, herbal medicine for the operation, because herbal medicine is the worst medicine you can get your hands on. Uh, and at the same time, when doing the operation, make sure that the pawn involved has a medical skill of five. This is the minimum surgery skill they can possibly have before they're allowed to do the operation. If they have a medical of four, they can't even do it. And if they have a medical of six, well, that improves their chances. And that's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for here is 50% brain damage. It makes things easier, but uh, we'll go more into the different levels of brain damage and how you can utilize them. Now, after running tests in about 500 pawns, what we've managed to find out is about if you keep them in these conditions using all of the, the aforementioned uh, variables, you'll get about 53.8% of the prisoners will end up with 50% brain damage. So if you'll just check on them here, you can see this one. Uh, yeah, brain damage, 50%. Uh, brain damage, 50%. Brain damage, 50... Well, actually, this is actually quite a good run here. Oh, nothing. This one here, nothing. Numbers work out about... Over 500 operations, it averaged 53% of the time. In these conditions, you'll end up with 50% brain damage. However, that's only 53%. It's like, 50, you got 50-50 odds, basically. However, I didn't count up all of the... Uh, it was getting really complicated trying to keep track of all the numbers, but about, oh, 3% of the time, you get 60% brain damage. 6% of the time, I got 70% brain damage. Uh, about 10% of the time, I got 80% brain damage. 2% of the time was 90% brain damage. 13% of the time, the operations were just, you know, botched and there was no brain damage at all. 16% uh, of the time was actually a success. 16% was success. That was uh, kind of impressive, to be honest. And then between 2 to 3% of the time, you'd end up with a trauma savant. <laughs> now, trauma savants are a bit weird. Uh, I, I kept one of these around just so you could have a look. Their brain is actually 50% gone. However, their consciousness is still completely A-OK -okay and they work completely normally but their manipulation has now gone up by 50%. However, they can't talk or hear, um, so they can't do anything to do with social interaction and stuff like that. This is what a trauma savant is. They're pretty rare to get your hands on. Wait, le let me rephrase that. According to the wiki, you get about a 12.5% chance that any brain damage results in a trauma savant. However, there's no way. I gave hundreds of pawns, literally hundreds of pawns brain damage, and we didn't even get 12 of them. You know what I mean? So th th there's no way it's 12.5% for brain damage this way. Maybe if you're getting shot in the head by arrows and stuff like that, it's that way. I know I, I actually have had pawns that got trauma savant during my playthroughs. It's just very unlikely with this method you're going to generate a large quantity of them if you're hoping to do that. So you've gone through with some operations, you've got yourself some uh, brain damage pawns. How many of them can you conveniently turn into a proper meat beacons? Now, the first one up here is 50% brain damage, then we got 60, 70, and 80. That's pretty much the whole range you can work with. Anyone with more less brain damage than that, say, you know, 81, well, you can, can't really get 81%, but say 90% brain damage, I can't really find a way to utilize those. 50% is probably your best bet. Now, this one here, it's, oh, actually, you know what, we'll go with Gunners, they're actually probably a better bet to start with. Yoners here has a joy, has 50% brain damage and a joy wire in their brain. The joy wire reduces their consciousness by 20%, so it takes them from 50 down to 30. However, 30 does not result in unconsciousness. Paul needs to go to 29 or lower. But the reason these immediately lapsed into unconsciousness was they're missing a right kidney. Right kidney messes with blood filtration, and blood filtration meshes, messes with consciousness, reducing it by two percentage points. This is why they are unconscious with only a joy wire. However, say... Barrett over here does not have any problems with their kidneys. So if we were to remove the, uh, say, oh, the circadian half cycler, we put this one in because it reduces their consciousness by 15%. So the joy wire is, an ex is minus 20. The circadian half cycler is another minus 15. So it's a minus 35, which reduces them to 15% consciousness. But if we rip out the half cycler, they go to 30% consciousness and they're up and about again. So what you want to do is, if, if you find a pawn that already has brain damage, great. Recruit them and you can turn them into a, a, a nice little meat beacon. However, if they don't have brain damage, a good thing to look out for would be people with destroyed kidneys, uh, a prosthetic heart, or a missing lung. 
you can also get asthmatics as well, but then you'll keep having to pay for the the healing of the lungs all the time. Or you could just, you know, rip out one of the lungs. So you can either rip out a lung, rip out a kidney, or give them a prosthetic heart, and that will knock someone who's at 30% consciousness unconscious. Um, another option is, geez, this just gets dark, a mind screw. A mind screw gives pain, pain reduces consciousness. So this knocks 6% off their consciousness. Now, do, do bear in mind, it's not a flat 6%. If they're already experiencing pain, throwing on a mind screw is not going to give them an extra 6%. There, it's, a, it's a scale that goes up, but it, it flattens near the top. So if they've already got a bunch of burn scars and then you throw a mind screw on top of that, the mind screw is probably going to drive it up less than 6%. They're already in an awful lot of pain. A little bit more is not going to do as much damage. This also brings us to one other point I'd like to make because I, I'm pretty sure this question is going to come up. If you have a pawn with the wimp trait and you give them a mind screw, that will disable them, but it does not knock them unconscious. So even though they've got a mind screw in them and they're disabled and lying on the ground, that doesn't actually lock their mood. Their mood can still be affected and it will start going down. So, you know, the mind screw is definitely going to make them unhappy and you can see that's actually moving down there. Re so you can't just get a wimp, implant them with a mind screw and lock their mood. You've got to actually knock them unconscious, which means you've got to chip away their consciousness until they pass out. All right, so over here we've got Barrett number two. This one's got 60% brain damage. Now, if you want to convert them, pretty easy. Joy wire circadian half cycler takes them below the, the threshold point. Now, circadian half cycler, though, is a little bit more difficult to get your hands on. If we check under the research section, brain wiring is all you require to get your hands on a mind screw, a pain stopper, and a joy wire. So those things are made using only components at a machining bench. You don't even need one of the, uh, the high-end fabrication benches to make those. Really quick, easy, simple to get your hands on. However, the circadian half cycler, oh, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult. You've got to go all the way down here to circadian influencer, as well as that you also need to get the uh, tech prints to unlock these. I mean, you also need it for these lower down ones, but these ones are generally an awful lot cheaper. Realistically, early on, you're probably not going to be able to get your hands on any of these unless you buy them. Uh, also, the psychic harmonizers that you're going to need, you can only buy those as well. But they seem to be reasonably common. You might have to visit a few towns, but uh, so long as you, you, you're not comfortable with caravanning, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But then we come up to this pawn. This pawn was a little bit trickier. Uh, the reason being is they've got 70%. This took an awful lot more effort. We, we put in the joy wire and the circadian half cycler, but we also had to put in the mind screw and the prosthetic heart just to drive them below it. But at the prosthetic heart, they were actually sitting at 30%. So the prosthetic heart just took them over the line. And then finally, we get this one, which is at 80% brain damage. We were still able to make them useful, but it took a lot of work. Uh, joy wire, of course, circadian half cycler, uh, mind screw. We had to give them a prosthetic heart, remove a lung and a kidney to affect both blood pumping, filtration and breathing. And at the same time, they needed a bunch of scarring. So they needed to be scared to begin with before this, this was even a possibility. So let's just say converting people with 80% brain damage is not really feasible, I don't think. 50% would be the easiest ones to go with. So how do you do all of this as conveniently as possible in the playthrough? Well, my advice would be grab prisoners and operate on the prisoners first. Anyone who survives with 50% brain damage, recruit them. And I would advise, like normally I used to look at people with psychic sensitivity or psychic hypersensitivity and think, wow, they would make a great caster. Now, when I look at them, they have to get restraining orders because honestly, they would make amazing meat beacons. Psychically sensitive pawns that can give a massive mood boost to people in range. Dump these near your hospitals and your crafting areas. In, like, as long as you keep your hospitals and crafting areas close by, these can provide a massive mood boost and prevent any sick pawns from having mental breaks. And at the same time, they can provide a massive mood boost to your crafters who will have more inspirations, giving you more legendary or masterwork items. Now, for the operations, what type of operation should you be doing if you're trying to aim to give brain damage? Well, you want to do all the implants that are involved with the head brain section. For example, if you give them a bionic eye, a bionic spine, bionic arm, none of those are going to do it. Even a nose job won't do it. Uh, venom fangs also don't do it. I had to test those, giving them dentures, a gastroanalyzer, none of that. What you really want is this list here. This is all the implants you can put into the head brain. So you get your joy wire, pain stoppers, a circadian assistant, half cycler, learning assistant, mind screw, neurocalculator, psychic harmonizer, psychic reader, and psychic sensitizer. All of those, any botched operations on those, have about a 53 54% chance of giving you someone with massive brain damage, which is really what you're targeting here. To make things more convenient for yourself, you're going to want to have these, the option to move these pawns about. And, well, yes you do. Even though they're, they're, they're consciousness has been reduced below the ability to, for them to be actually useful, what you can do is you can drug them up. There are two drugs that are very useful for this. Uh, the first one is Wake Up. 
And the second one is Go Juice. Wake up increases consciousness by 10%. Uh, so look at that. They just rose right out of there. 38%. So they've gone from 28 to 38. If we gave them Go Juice, they'd go to 48. This allows us to modify them uh, on the fly. As well as that, you can also change their gear. For example, they have an LTEC staff equipped. If they just pass out unconscious, and they will when this drug wears off, they'll just fall over on the ground and drop their weapon. And if they're not holding that weapon, they don't give us that nice boost, which is giving an extra mood boost to everyone in range. So we really do want them to pass out where we want, when we want. In that instance, what we can do is we can just set them up to be drugged. You can, there's an operation section here. You can just go to anesthetize. Where is it? Ah, here you go. Anesthetize. Assign them to a hospital bed, and someone will come along and apply whatever medicine you've picked. You can just use herbal medicine, and that will knock them out. However, the wake-up does last for 12 hours, so you probably have to knock them out a few times, because eventually the anesthetic will wear off before the wake-up does. Don't apply smoke leaf. Smoke leaf gives a 30... It's a... What is it? It applies, I think, it's like a minus 30 to their consciousness. You can potentially kill them. If you reduce their consciousness too low, they will just straight up die, because they'll forget to breathe. But this allows you to change their gear, and also equip them with clothing. You're going to probably want to make sure they're going to stay well insulated because you will forget about them and you don't want them dying of something silly like uh, frostbite or heat stroke, which will happen because you won't be paying attention to them and they won't go and change their own clothing. As well as that, since they won't change their own clothing, these clothing will degrade and eventually just literally fall right off them as far as I'm aware. So maybe every so often get them some new, new threads just so that they can stay warm. Anyway, we will uh, assign Yunners back to bed and we will have them uh, prioritize operating on them at which point they will knock them out and god using the most expensive medicine. Okay that was my bad. But anyway, they're uh, sedated again which means their consciousness is reduced to 1% until that wears off. We'd want to uh, come back here and make sure we anesthetize them every four hours until the wake up high is gone. The next question is just how far can you take this? And well if you give them a whole bunch of LTEC equipment to crank up their psychic sensitivity, you can get them reliably giving out a mood boost of 30 to everyone within a 30 tile radius, which is, that's a lot of mood boost going on right there. Of course, it's completely impractical. There's no way you could equip someone with all of this gear, plus it's all legendary, uh, highly unlikely. But, you know, let's just see how far you can take it, because as well as that, the, uh, the psychic sensitivity of the pawn also affects just how much uh, how much of a boost it gives. So let's maybe crank this one up to something similar. This here is Dr. Hannibal outfitted in their own legendary LTEC gear, including an LTEC staff, and they've got a psychic sensitizer installed inside their brain, and they're getting a 110 mood boost from, uh, from Yunners over here. That is just insane. At the same point, just that Barrett over there that should be giving a plus 8 is actually giving a plus 30 because of all the gear they've got attached to them. So what you can do is, yeah, you can imagine stacking these. You could stack just, say, two normal Yunners on top of each other, and they'll give a plus 30 mood boost to whoever's nearby. It's just, it's sort of crazy how much of a mood boost they can give to people. I mean, that would be plus 60 to everyone in range if you had two of these. These, these Yunners are amazing. All right, so how can you practically use these and where should you position them? This is a live save, and Yunners over here was uh, the first meat beacon I got. They're sort of positioned around our crafting area so they can affect a large chunk around here. I was hoping to affect the prisoners, but unfortunately it doesn't affect prisoners. The uh, effects of the mood beacon only affects members of your own tribe or side. So whatever side you have, they're affected. It doesn't affect your enemies or friendlies. It only affects your people. We'll come back to a little bit more on that in a second. Now we've got a second over here, Thomas. Uh, Thomas was actually a, just a lucky find. They got shot in the brain by a, a bow, reducing them to 30%. And they already had some scarring, which had reduced them to 23% consciousness. We, we just stuck in a harmonizer and a sensitizer and they were good to go. So for example, this person over here is actually in range of Yunners down there and Thomas. In fact, it, the hospital is double covered, which means Ken over here is getting, uh, oh, 31, a plus 31 mood bonus from this. No one in my hospital is ever going to break, so long as we can keep those, uh, those mood beacons alive. As well as that, it does cover a part, partial area of the kill box. My advice would be probably covering your kill box, hospital area, crafting area, covering with the, covering, uh, having a few beacons like that is good. As well as that, the cheaper the pawn, the better. I do remember wealth, wealth and having more pawns and more wealth will drive up the, the difficulty of raids, and having a bunch of coma people around is probably not great. However, if those coma people are cheap, well, that's an awful lot better. So, for example, if the coma person has, oh, I don't know, peg legs, uh, missing arms, you know, uh, let, let's just say if they did not have some, if, if they were less valuable overall, then they're going to cost you less and they will result in less of a threat. You know, there's no point giving this to someone who's got a whole bunch of expensive architect parts built in. Yeah, um, and now let's just get on to the even darker aspects of this. 
what you could do is you could capture, say, a pirate, then implant them the same way, except uh, drive their mood all the way down. Oh, yeah, for these pawns here, we dose them with drugs before we knock them unconscious. This one's say, like high on go juice, ambrosia, beer, psychite, all this stuff. We, we dose them up so that they're really happy when we knock them unconscious. That way it drives up their mood to maximum. I'm going to make sure they're on max mood. What you could do with your prisoners is, you know, uh, let, let them see some stuff or keep them in the cold and stuff and drive all their mood way down so that they give a massive mood penalty to any enemies near them. But it will only work for that side. So, for example, you could get pirates, do that to them, and then you could put them near your, your kill box so that you could drive them insane as they walk through your kill box and their mood plummets and they, you know, have social fights and stuff like that. Be a bit difficult to manage and really it's more of a niche thing. I know people are going to ask because this is RimWorld and uh, yeah, people in RimWorld will ask this. So you could do it. It's just, it's highly impractical because considering the amount of factions that are in the game, it would only work for each individual faction. You'd probably need two or three of these to make a real dent in the opponent, and that's for each enemy that comes in. I, I just, it's, it, it can be done, it's just I think it would be highly impractical. Outside of a few very niche scenarios. One final piece of advice, and this is more for outside of RimWorld, just maybe don't mention this to people outside of RimWorld. If they, if they don't play RimWorld, don't tell them. I tried telling it to someone who doesn't play RimWorld, and uh, they gave me a kind of look that made me shut up very early on into my explanation. I'm just saying, you know, for... Uh, just don't, maybe. Except for, you know, people on Reddit. People on Reddit, yeah. People on Reddit have seen just about everything at this point. I think you're pretty safe on that front. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope this is at least mildly informative of you and not too horrifying. And uh, good luck. Uh -huh.